Thanks to Vanta for sponsoring this video. If you're watching this video, it means that Apple Intelligence is finally available. Well, sort of. More on that in just a moment. Apple Intelligence is, of course, Apple's branding for artificial intelligence, and it's basically a bunch of AI-powered features that can run on your Apple device. I've been able to use these features for a couple of months now, and they're good, but some of these features are kind of hidden away a bit. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything that should be getting released in the first wave of AI features, because keep in mind that some features still aren't available and will be coming in the next few months. Okay, let's get into it. First, let's take a moment to go over the technical requirements needed to run Apple Intelligence. You'll need to be running the latest version of iOS 18, and you'll also need a compatible device. This video is focused on the iPhone, and as of now, compatible iPhones are the iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 16, and iPhone 16 Pro. These are currently the only iPhone models that support Apple Intelligence features. If you're using an iPad, you'll need an M-powered iPad, or an iPad mini version 7 to follow along. And for Mac users, an empowered Mac is required. To enable Apple Intelligence, open Settings, tap into Apple Intelligence and Siri and enable it. During the beta process, you had to join a waitlist, but this moved really quickly, minutes in most cases. I assume that Apple might do the same for the public release. Also, do be aware that at the time of making this video, Apple Intelligence is only available in the United States with US English set in your device's language settings. But Apple is planning to roll out these features to other regions and languages soon, so make sure to check if it's available in your area and language. Head to Apple's official website if you want to learn more. Okay, we'll start with writing tools designed to help you edit and rewrite any content that you create on your Apple device. This functionality is built right into the operating system, so there's no need for any additional apps. You can use writing tools anywhere that you see a flashing text cursor. So in this example, I've drafted an email to my team regarding a workplace issue. It's a bit unprofessional, so let's fix that. First, in the email composition screen, I'll tap, then tap and hold to bring up the contextual menu and choose select all to highlight all the text. Then I'll look for the writing tools option. It usually appears in the menu bar just above the keyboard, but if it doesn't, you can access it through the contextual menu. Writing tools is divided into two sections. The top section focuses on proofreading and rewriting your content, while the bottom section is for summarizing. If I just wanted to check for grammatical errors, I could tap the proofread button. But in this case, I want to make the email more professional, so I'll tap the professional button. My device will analyze the text to find the best way to rewrite it in a more professional tone. Once it's done, you'll see a completely rewritten email that removes the angry sections and makes the message much more polished. At this point, you have a few options. You can press the undo arrow to revert to the previous text or use the original button to go back to the very first version of your text. If you're not satisfied with the rewrite, you can also tap the redo or rewrite button on the right hand side to try again. For now, I'll press done and you'll see that my text is now fully editable just like before. So I can edit, make changes and then send it like you would any regular email. Let's look at another example of how you might use writing tools in your work. On the screen, you'll see that I've got some lecture notes. And as you can see, the notes are just a jumble of text with commas separating the points. There's no real structure or format. So to tidy this up, I'll once again select all the text and access writing tools just like we did before. This time, instead of using the rewrite options at the top of the menu, I'm going to focus on the options at the bottom. The summary tool located on the bottom left will do exactly what you'd expect. It analyzes the text and creates a brief summary, usually in the form of a short paragraph. Once the summary is generated, I've got a few options. I can copy the summary to paste it somewhere else. I can replace the existing text with the summary or share it directly from the writing tools menu. If I press the back button, I can try some of the other options. For example, the key points tool aims to extract the main points from the text. This tool can be a bit hit or miss. Sometimes it's really accurate, other times it does miss the mark. You also have the list option, which attempts to convert your notes into a bulleted list format. And finally, there's the table option, which tries to determine if the text can be structured into a table. Like the key points tool, the success of these features depends on the content that you're working with, so your results may vary. 
So your deal is almost closed and all that's left is the security review. But when it comes to those lengthy security questionnaires, the endless back and forth between you, your security team and the customer can often cause deals to stall out, leaving your deal at risk and dollars on the table. With Vanta questionnaire automation, go-to-market teams can complete security reviews up to five times faster, helping you close deals in less time than ever. Vanta's AI generates responses from your security knowledge base, so your team can review and submit in no time. Complete questionnaires in any format from forms to portals. Over 8,000 global companies like ZoomInfo, Smart Recruiters, and Noibu use Vanta to streamline security questionnaires and close deals fast. Experience Vanta questionnaire automation for yourself with a self-guided product tour. Visit the link in the description of this video or scan my QR code to learn more. Apple Intelligence can create summaries of the messages and emails that you receive on your phone, helping you to quickly catch up without sifting through every individual message. For example, if you receive a flurry of text messages in a short period, Apple Intelligence will attempt to give you a summary of everything that you've missed when you check your phone. This feature works really well with straightforward or professional messages, but it does struggle a bit with more casual texts that include slang or inside jokes that your device might not understand. There was actually a news article a couple of weeks ago about a guy finding out in a pretty brutal way that he'd been dumped thanks to Apple Intelligence summarizing his ex-girlfriend's text for him. Where this feature really shines is in the Mail app. When you open your inbox, instead of seeing the first few lines of an email, you might notice a little right pointing arrow with a text icon above it. This indicates that the email has been summarized into a concise line or two, giving you a quick overview of the content before you even open the email. When you do tap into the email itself, you'll notice a summarize button at the top of the screen, just below the sender's name. Tap on this button and your phone will quickly generate a summary of the email's contents. If the email is part of a longer thread, Apple Intelligence will do its best to summarize all of the messages in the chain for you. The Apple Intelligence feature that I think people will likely use the most from this new range of tools is the image cleanup feature. It's definitely my favorite feature. To use this, open the Photos app and find a photo that you'd like to edit. At the bottom of the screen, tap the edit button and you should see a cleanup option appear just to the right of the crop tool. When you tap on this for the very first time, your phone may need to download the necessary cleanup software in the background, but this should only take a couple of moments. Once that's done, your phone will analyze the image, looking for elements that it thinks you might want to remove. If it detects something obvious, like a person or an object in the background, you'll see a flash animation over that item. In this case, all you need to do is tap on the object and your phone will instantly remove it from the image. If there's something specific that hasn't been identified, you can pinch to zoom in or out and then use your finger to select or paint over the area that you'd like to remove. Your phone will then remove whatever you've highlighted and if you make a mistake, you can easily use the undo button at the top of the screen. Keep in mind that this feature works best with background items. It isn't designed to remove large or prominent subjects from your photo, like a person who is a main focus of the image. But for those moments when a great beach photo is ruined by someone walking in the background, this tool offers a quick and easy way to clean up your images. Oh, and another cool feature is that if you'd like to blur out a face, you can just circle it and your phone will pixelate it for you. This is technically a feature that existed in some form before Apple Intelligence, but it's seen a noticeable improvement with the introduction of AI, the ability to use natural language when searching for photos. The simplest way to explain this is that you no longer need to overthink your searches in your photo library. For example, if you wanted to find videos of your dog playing in the garden, you just tap the search button and type in your dog's name followed by the phrase playing in the garden. Your phone will do its best to pull up all the relevant photos and videos. You could also try searches like photos of cake or beach trips in 2022. There are countless possibilities. So the best advice I can give is to try it out for yourself and see just how intuitive it really is. Another fun Apple Intelligence feature in the Photos app is the ability to create a photo memory movie using just a description. To do this, open the Photos app and scroll down to access the additional options. Look for the Memories section. From there, you can either tap the Create button or tap into the Apple Intelligence box that says Describe a Memory. Simply do as it suggests, describe the memory that you'd like to turn into a movie. For example, you might say something like our dog last year and then let your phone work its magic to create that memory movie for you. 
Once created, the memory automatically lives in the Memories section of your Photos app. This feature is pretty straightforward. Your phone can use Apple intelligence to suggest replies to messages you receive based on the content of the message and its contextual understanding of you. This means that the more that you use it, the smarter and more personalized these suggestions should become. You'll know that you've got this option when you receive a message and tap into the message composition window. Apple intelligence suggested replies will appear in the menu bar just above the keyboard. You can easily identify them because they'll briefly flash with a purple orange hue before returning to normal. If you like one of the suggestions, just tap on it to enter it into the text field. The message won't automatically send, so you still have the chance to edit it before you hit send. In iOS 18, when you're on a phone call, you'll notice a waveform icon in the top left corner of the screen. If you tap this, a notification will be played to everyone on the call, letting them know that the conversation is about to be recorded. The call will then start recording, and once you end the call, a note will automatically be created in your Notes app within a dedicated phone calls folder. In the note created after the call, you have the option to play the recording or view a preview of the call, which provides a summary of what was discussed. If you tap on the call button, you can view the full transcript of the conversation or press summary to see an Apple intelligence generated summary. You can also tap anywhere within the note to start adding your own notes to this particular call if you like. This feature isn't just useful for phone calls. It also works for simply dictating information into your phone. If you prefer to do that, you can open any note, tap the paperclip button in the menu just above the keyboard, and you'll have the option to either attach a file, including an audio file from the Files app, or as I suspect most people will do, tap record audio. When you start recording audio directly into your notes app, it will be treated just like the audio from a phone call, complete with options for playback, transcript, and summary. If you're someone who likes to quickly jot down ideas using your phone, this is gonna be a really useful tool with Apple intelligence in iOS 18. I've talked a lot on my channel about focus modes, which are rules that you can set on your device to ensure that only specific people and apps can reach you at certain times, depending on what you're doing. So the most common example is a work focus mode that helps silence notifications from friends and family when you're working and vice versa when you're off the clock. But there are a couple of issues with them. First, even if you know what you're doing, creating focus modes can be really time consuming. Second, life isn't always black and white. While you might want to silence personal notifications when you're working, what happens if a friend or family member needs to reach you in an emergency? This is where the reduce interruptions focus mode in Apple intelligence comes in handy. To access it, go to settings on your phone, scroll down to focus, and you'll notice a new focus mode labeled reduce interruptions with the Apple intelligence logo. When you tap into this, you'll see that intelligent breakthrough and silencing is enabled at the top and it's grayed out, meaning that you can't disable it. This feature is the core of the reduce interruptions focus mode. It aims to intelligently limit disturbances while still allowing important notifications to get through. Aside from that, everything else on this page is just like any other focus mode, giving you plenty of manual control if you wanna fine tune how it works. Also, if you go to any of your existing focus modes, you'll see the intelligent breakthrough and silencing option at the top. So if you've already created personalized focus modes like work or personal, you can still take advantage of this Apple intelligence feature by enabling it here. In my experience, it works pretty well. It's like do not disturb, but much smarter at ensuring that the important stuff gets through. Siri has been enhanced with a wealth of new knowledge about how Apple products work in general. For example, you can now activate the voice assistant and ask something like, how do I activate a focus mode? And it will guide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. A wide range of topics across all major Apple devices is covered here. Although I'll be honest, I'm not too worried about being out of a job just yet. When I was testing this feature, I asked, how do I edit an existing focus mode? Something that you'd expect it to handle easily, but my voice assistant ended up directing me to a web search instead. I'm assuming that this is something that will improve over time. While it's far from perfect at the moment, it is still worth exploring if you need a quick answer on how to do something on one of your devices. A great new feature in Apple intelligence is the ability to type to Siri, so you don't always have to speak your commands out loud. This is perfect for those moments when you'd prefer to be a bit more discreet. Plus, you can now activate it by tapping the screen without needing to use a voice command. 
To set this up, go to settings, then select Apple Intelligence and Siri and tap on the talk and type to Siri option. Make sure that type to Siri is enabled at the bottom of the screen. From now on, you can simply double tap at the bottom of your screen to activate Siri. You'll see a little flash and the Siri interface will appear along with the keyboard. You can then type your request just as you would normally speak it, hit the return key and interact with your iPhone's voice assistant all without saying a single word. So there you go, those are the main Apple intelligence features now available on your Apple device. Honestly, my experience of them so far is that there are some killer features here that I'll use all the time. Photo cleanup, summaries and transcriptions being the main ones for me. There are definitely some other features that I'm less excited about, but it is still good to see Apple finally getting more involved with AI. And I'm definitely looking forward to the next release with things like ChatGPT integration and the all new Siri. What do you think of Apple intelligence so far? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.